change. With the market sitting at records, everyone's interested in stocks again, and that's been driving up profits in investment banks. Stiefel reported record client assets of $407 billion in the third quarter, up 25 percent from a year ago, with the company posting its second best quarter ever. Joining me now with more on earnings and the potential headwinds for markets, Ron Koscheski is the chairman and CEO of Stiefel Financial. It's great to have you back. Really an impressive quarter. And you know, at a time of historically low interest rates, which are supporting deals, supporting the stock market activity, but supposed to be themselves a headwind for financials, do you think your company can continue to post performance like this, you know, quarter after quarter after quarter? Or is this sort of a, a one-time perfect storm in a good way? Well, I don't think it's a perfect storm, but I also have to tell you, Kelly, I mean, our revenues uh, are up 30 percent, our profits up 70 percent. I wouldn't say that we're going to post that quarter after quarter at all. I mean, I, uh, but what's going on? It's it's been a very strong market for us. Our our performance has been phenomenal since the pandemic, and we sort of epitomize what's going on, and that is demand for services. Our services is through the roof, and demand for goods across the economy is just through the roof. And and you really have to ask yourself, from an investment point of view, you know, what can cause that to change? Because that's really what's going on. It isn't so much supply chain bottlenecks. It's just huge demand. Why do you cite demand, especially for goods? Again, I think of you guys as basically a dollars shop, not a, not a physical goods shop. You know what I'm saying? No, we are. And I, I meant to say that uh, for us, though, the demand for our services because of just uh, look, if you, we are a, a dollar shop. And when you put five point four trillion dollars uh, of fiscal mm -hmm. uh, stimulus in the middle of the economy, we're going to be busy. That's just that's <laughs> I don't want to say it any more than that. But but also the demand for goods, uh, which is what you're reading about with all the supply chain. It's it, it's tremendous. And uh, but there are some things that are going to cause that to begin to potentially dissipate. And and that's going to have implications for this for the equity markets. Yeah, let's talk about that for a moment. You know, the news out of D.C. is very fast shifting and we get comments from Senator Manchin even in the past couple of hours about, you know, kind of the the tax proposals he would or wouldn't back to pay for the spending bill. Do you think that higher taxes are a potential headwind next year? Because I'm not even sure they're going to be going up on high earners, depending on what happens with salt. Well, you know, look, any any time I think you you ta you raise taxes and take it out of the, the private sector, that that is in some form um, a headwind. Frankly, what's what's going on today? I think we have to just wait and see. I, I, it seems like every five minutes there's a new proposal on taxes and uh, in some of them are, you know, pretty uh, uh, transformative, may be a nice word, versus <laughs> radical, but it's, uh, it's something that I think we, we, we can watch. I think the bigger, the bigger thing that, that investors have to think about is that we have put so much money in the system that what has to happen, in my opinion, is we need to start sort of letting air out of the balloon, and where that is going to come is the Fed. Yeah. And the Fed has to start tapering QE. You, you, Kelly, here's a number that 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 bothers me as a finance guy. We're putting 130 billion dollars a month into the economy through QE. Yet on the other side of the ledger, we got 1.4 trillion in repo mm -hmm. at the Fed. And I just want you to think about it. That's like pouring money in on one side and taking it out on the other. We we need to uh, start tapering and ending QE, and that has implications for the market. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.